Mm-hmm. Show of love. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of love at the table. There is a sure lot of love. Is. Is. Best hobby in the world. Yeah, this is a happy, happy, happy show. Yep. <laughs> this is actually a great hobby. That's amazing, the amazing people. Where can I get we to go meet. and have this much fun on a Saturday night? I've met so many cool people. Steve Mantia, you're awesome. Glenda, Campbell Rice is here, Daniel's yep. here, and we are buddy about to do this. Hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. Sponsors tonight the TSU KN1 from Soundtracks. A lot of neat stuff to talk about tonight. Let's do this. Show number 146. The O-Scale edition. Special it is edition. the O-Scale mm-hmm. edition. It's awesome to have uh, you strapped up with sound tonight. I said we should have done that a long time ago. Somebody give us a countdown and let's just pretend like we exactly. know how to do this. Go Three, ahead. Three, two, one. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. And by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printing filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Additional support for What's Neat this week is brought to you by Soundtracks, industry leaders in model railroad sound and technology for over 30 years. Now please visit our website at soundtracks.com and at checkout, be sure to use the promo code WNTW15 for 15% off of your purchases. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week, show number 146 for February 13th. 2021. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And we've got March and February. Both videos are done. And February just came out. Thank you very much. And tonight, we've got a lot of great people at the table. It's the best hobby in the world with all my favorite friends tonight. (laughs) You say that every week. I do. (laughs) I've heard that. First of all, I'm starting all the way next to me right here. I've got Stephen Mantia with us tonight. Hey, Steve. Hello. Thanks for having me on again. And we've got Steve's amazing wife, Glenda Mantia, Thank with us tonight. Me. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Glenda. Hello. Campbell Rice. Hello, everybody. the other side of the screen over here. And Daniel Coombs is strapped up with a microphone. You can say hi to all of us. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> hey, Daniel, thanks for running camera tonight. Tonight is a special show in that we are showing a lot of three-way rail beautiful O-scale models on the table tonight because Three Rail has got such a great following in our hobby. And it's one thing that we really don't talk about very much on the show, but tonight we're going to change that. That's it. Mm-hmm. So Steve, you've got a train show coming up, uh, and we talked about that last week. Yes. And this is the After the Storm train show on May the 15th, 2021. And this is going to be held down in a community called Imperial, Missouri. Imperial, Missouri. Yep. And I think that's at 1515 Miller Road. Now, you've had some calls since we talked about it last week. Tell us what has transpired so far. Yes, I've had a number of phone calls already uh, about it. A gentleman in mid-Missouri has called up and uh, saw the uh, podcast and wants to get a couple tables. And then I had a gentleman here uh, locally who also has seen it and wants some more information. So everybody is really... I think excited to have a train show be yes. back in the uh, area and mm-hmm. back in the back in the real normal world. Hopefully, right. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds so great. Just the words "train show" sounds fantastic <laughs> yes, it's, because it's we haven't nice. seen them in over a year. Nope. Yeah. And and this is going to be a great show south of St. Louis. That's where Imperial is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you all want to get tables at it, you contact St- Stephen Mantia. And what's the phone number to contact you at, Steve? Three one four. Three six nine. Three nine four nine, and I like how that appears at the bottom of the table, so that everybody like can call you. And also, you buy trains for cash. We talked about that on last mm-hmm. week's show. Mm-hmm. And some of the models on the table are, in fact, some of the models that you've purchased, aren't they? That is correct. Um, it was hard to decide which ones to bring tonight. Um, 
Glenda had said, you oh, just pick a few of them you either like. And that's the problem. Oh, I like this one. I like that one. Well, no, no, let's do this one. And it was just, we decided to just grab a few here. I went with the Santa Fe three piece because mm -hmm. I thought that was nice. And then, of course, I went with the, the steam because mm -hmm. Glenda likes steam. steam. We're surrounded mm -hmm. by Santa Fe tonight. All the jackets <laughs> yes. are around yes. us. Yes. Yes. Because Yelzma, Denny Yelzma, wanted us to talk about the Santa Fe trains and uh, logos that are on his website. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that. First of all, i got to tell you, it's been really cold here in St. Louis. I can't, you know, everybody around the country is going through this right now. But mm -hmm. it's like 9 degrees out there right now. Yes. And I shot some beautiful footage of the river. I looked forward to this week because I knew for sure it would freeze up. And yes, it did. The neat thing about the river is when it gets this cold and it's going down for the next three days in a row we're going into the zeros and the one degrees and mm -hmm. i don't know what that is fahrenheit wise yes. but what that means is great big ice chunks start forming on the ra uh, river i almost said railroad <laughs> river out there <laughs> and it's absolutely beautiful not only are the bald eagles flying overhead but you see these chunks of ice and at night it's amazing because it sounds absolutely like thunder all night long on the river it's one of the amazing things of living up here on the bluff you, you it's something you don't get to see when you're in the city. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show a little video footage. I went up in the neighbor's yard so I could get a good view of the entire uh, property out back here. And so that's what you're seeing right now. So rock and roll, love it that way. Our friend Jennifer Kirk in England in the UK had me in an interview this week. We did 77 minutes of questions. And the interesting thing about this interview was it wasn't your normal, uh, what do you like the model type questions. We talked about the industry in general, a lot of the background of our hobby. And we also talked about the podcasting and the production of shows and how well that's going for her and what we're doing on this end. So it's more like a business show. So look forward to that on Jennifer Kirk's website. Uh, YouTube site. Uh, it's, it was really enjoyable. Thank you very much, Jenny, for doing that interview with me. So, Steve, let's talk about some of these amazing three-rail models. And I know we've got uh, Daniel lashed up to a microphone as well. He's going to do a demonstration with some MTH stuff. And I believe the stuff on the table is also, in fact, MTH. Am I right? Yes. Everything I brought was uh, MTH tonight so that we can uh, see the, how quality and see how very nice it, that it looks. And some of how it operates. Mm -hmm. Let's start with these beautiful E units. These look like they're E9s. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And this is 148 scale. This is the big three rail O scale stuff and the war bonnets look absolutely spectacular. And the detail, yes. look at the detail mm -hmm. on these All the things. rivets, all the things that you can see on it, it is just amazing. Yeah. Now Daniel, what do you know about this? Do models like this in that size, they have sound in them too, is that right? Yes, all the MTH models have either the protosound system which is the uh, standard sound board that's used in all of the MTH equipment, whether it be the Rail King or Premier Line. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And this steam locomotive, this looks like a streamlined New York Central. Is that a Hudson? Yes. That's Very absolutely nice. beautiful, the detail. Tell us about that. I mean, what is there? <laughs> There's so much to talk about. I there. know. It's just, uh, <laughs> I, I just grabbed, grabbed the box. Um, it was just basically uh, just... More than anything else, it just, would you say it just looks pretty? It is. It's, just, it's, it's just, just so pretty. Beautiful. It's just, the detail is, is beautiful. Um, it's, it's got beautiful coal. Train. It I really, see a yep. full interior mm -hmm. in the cab. Yep. I mean, this it's it's it's, uh, it's amazing now. I say it over in time. Uh, all the, the, the detail that all scales have, mm -hmm. from Z scale yep. all the way up, it, everything is looking more and more realistic every oh, single yeah. year. Yeah. It's... It's, it just really, it really looks it really good. Does. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this Coors Light train. What is this? That's the Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet. Silver oh. Bullet, all that. And that's chrome, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chrome plated in plastic. And Daniel showed us earlier that the door opens up and there's actually beer inside this train. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. And Glenda, you brought something here that you wanted to share because it um, is? It's Valentine's Day tomorrow, so maybe some of the ladies out there would like to buy a train for their husband, kind of switch it up. Um, that's a Lionel a gondola, and it's a Valentine's Day train, um, a Valentine's Day car. It's, uh, the candy is just um, not to be eaten, but we just oh, wanted yeah. to fill oh, it with a little bit of sweet candy hearts. I was just know, getting ready. Candy yeah, that's hearts. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We just wanted to kind of show you they, they come in Valentine's. We have one for Easter and um, a few different types of the seasons that have that kind of Valentine, that kind of car. That's awesome. Thank you. 
I know, right? I wish my mm -hmm. wife would buy me one of those full of candy. <laughs> <laughs> I could put chocolate in there. Or you can, anything. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, we've got Yale's graphic on this screen right here. I've got his website on the screen, which we've never done that before. And that's because Denny wanted us to talk about his Santa Fe logos uh, that he produces. This is Santa Fe week, obviously, from all the trains on the table. And I, in fact, purchased a jacket from him and didn't even know it back in 1993. And I've got that coat hanging up here right behind Steve. Wow. And that's got a dash nine on it. And that's the Santa Fe uh, roof that they use that would clear all the coaling facilities. That mm -hmm. was that special cab that Go they had done. Gullwing cab. Gullwing cab, that mm -hmm. is right. And so I purchased this thing from him for, you know, over 20 years ago, 18 years ago, and didn't even know I bought it from Denny. I checked with him today, and sure enough, that's one of his logos that he made. He also sent us another jacket that is behind me here. And that's mm -hmm. got uh, the FP45 on it and the GP60 wide cab. So it's a GP60M. And that's in blue, and it was very nice. Mm. And I'm going to show you his website. I've got it on the screen right here. And we're going to go to S for Santa Fe. I think I can do that easy enough if this all works out. Good. Okay, now scroll down. Oh, is that all I have to do? Yep. Rock and yep. roll. And so we're scrolling down, and we can see the various logos that, I don't have a mouse, that Denny makes. Santa Fe. I'll probably use arrows. Your arrow down I? button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check it out. The blue mm -hmm. goose. Mm -hmm. I see yep. that right away. Yep. The blue uh, Santa Fe logo. And there, there's the one that was up there now. Mm -hmm. SD seventy five M logo, also with the Santa Fe yep. logo below it. This is much easier than doing a screen roll on the computer and trying to figure out the timing of things. F threes, mm -hmm. with the Indian and the Super Chief logo mm -hmm. on it. I am messing this up, Daniel. I know, I can't really do it that easily. Bear with me here. There's a well, jacket. There's the jacket Here's where got. we left <laughs> off with the yeah. PA unit, and I'm just going to hit the arrow down button. This will make it much easier. There's the logo I've got hanging up behind us. Mm -hmm. Another GP60M logo. Look at all these different logos. He's got 1,300 different logos mm -hmm. of all various railroads, and tonight mm -hmm. we're showing just the Santa Fe. These would be drum heads that you would see on the back of passenger cars, mm -hmm. the Super mm -hmm. Chief and El Very Capitan. Nice. Mm -hmm. So nice. Kansas City Chief, the San Francisco Chief, mm -hmm. the San Diegan, and that is just the Santa Fe Flyer. Wow. That's amazing. And Denny's going to be here in March, so we're looking forward to mm -hmm. having him. I think mm -hmm. Campbell's going to allow you to allow Denny to stay at your house? Yeah, hotel He's going to be here a couple so. of days. Oh, wow. that's very <laughs> nice. So he'll get to yeah. spend a day here yeah. with us on the bluff, and he's going to spend a day running Campbell's layout, and we're going to okay. take him down to Sugar Fire wow. and have him visit Joshua down there. Yep. Yes. And looking mm -hmm. forward to all of that great mm -hmm. stuff. So that's that on that, and I wanted to show various things. So Campbell, you were mentioning to me earlier that you've been working on your layout. And tell me what have you been working on on the layout? Oh yeah, they're just just trying to get things finished. I'm, that little industrial area of mine, I've, I've, I've done some roads and and um, kind of placed the um, a lot of buildings where I want them, and doing ballasting and just trying to get things done. But uh, anybody that wants to follow along with my modeling, um, I created a special Facebook page. Uh, if you search Campbell's Railroad Modeling, you will find my, my uh, Facebook page there and, and you can follow along. I usually try to do uh, some video or photos or something of what I do each week in my progress. So um, go check it out, like it, and enjoy it. We'll all learn something together, hopefully. That's right. I love that layout and mm -hmm. the signs that you've got. I remember the general store. What was that called? Dollar, the Dollar General. The Dollar mm -hmm. General mm -hmm. store. Yeah. It's yeah. really neat how you're incorporating the modern buildings of today into your layout. Right. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. something that we can all relate to. And it's not mm -hmm. something, it's, it's more new to the hobby, obviously, sure. because they're new buildings. Mm -hmm. But there's so many different buildings that are out. I've seen Taco Bells and McDonald's and gas stations. Yep. And uh, there's a company, uh, Summit Models or Summit. Um, miniatures or something like that but you can google that but they they're the ones that do all the modern stuff and, mm -hmm. and they're they're really nice so mm -hmm. that's that's where i got that from that's nice that's cool now daniel's going to do a demo he's got a train set up here and this is also an mth train daniel and how do you want to go ahead and do that you were going to run it and show us smoke and everything yes yeah, so i was going to show you what mth stuff can do all right so now that i'm around um, this is actually my grandfather's train set. Uh, he acquired this here in St. Louis because of the Anheuser-Busch uh, livery we got, the Budweiser plants right in downtown St. Louis. He retired from there. 
that's why he got it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to head started up now. I want to real quick show off the main components of the MTH DCS system. It's pretty simple. You got the TIU, which is basically power going into it, and then that feeds off to the track via either the wireless controller or, which is now what they've got, is the Wi-Fi app. Okay, now this is the full version for, I think, about $25. They got a free version with just the basic uh, functionality. We can go ahead and start it up. Maybe. Hold on, wait a minute for it. Now, you're going to use your cell phone to power this, is that yes. right? What app are you using to do that? The MTH DCS Wi-Fi app. And this is the home screen, okay? The basic functions of this engine include the bell, whistle, and then we'll scroll up, turn some smoke on, and I believe might take a little bit here for the smoke to uh, activate. There it goes. Nice. It's even chuffing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Very mm -hmm. nice. Very nice. And the way that this whole system is uh, set up is that you can optimize and you can actually adjust all the volumes of the different sounds. You can adjust the smoke intensity. You can also adjust the chuff. So I can actually go in with the settings and make it as a eight chuff per revolution as an articulated engine. Now one other thing I want to point out with this real quick. This particular set is what they call the Rail King line. Now Rail King line is more like equivalent to, you know, a Bachman, a basic starter portion of the company. To whereas on the table here, some of Steve's models are all the Premier. The Premier of the MTH is their high end, almost equivalent to an Athen Genesis in HO scale or N scale. Um, they've all got the Protosound 3 system or Protosound 2, depending on when the locomotive was, of course, made, because as time progressed, more technologies got uh, um, put in to the engines as time went on. So again, this was a set that was only a few of them produced. Um, they also had add-on cars for the Anheuser-Busch train, so you can expand out the length of your train. If you have, you know, a big loud, like, I wish, you know, we had no scale out right here, we could have run the whole giant long train. But uh, I think that's about it. It's pretty much simple to use, simple to operate. Um, yeah. That's about it. What's the caboose there, Daniel? The caboose. That is another, I believe, Rail King Santa Fe caboose. That's one of Steve's models. Oh, okay. That's one of the MPs. Okay, and as you see, there. I mean, it is... The detail is great. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It is. And I love the livery. Now, uh, MTH Trains has also made some kind of holiday-themed trains. They've made Halloween. They've made Christmas mm -hmm. trains. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you who friend me on Facebook saw that this year I had a giant Christmas train display, and I had been starting on it. Sorry about that, the injector's going. Um, I started on that Christmas train back in May. I mean, the, the stuff that they made was just absolutely phenomenal. So that is all I got to talk about this, and let's get back to it. How about that? It was very nice. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool, Daniel, as I strap on my microphone again. I've got on the screen here, we've got a new sponsor for the show, and that is glroboticsusa.com. And they, in fact, make over 61 different flavors. I want to call it flavors. 61 different <laughs> yeah, colors. Robin, yeah, that's it. <laughs> of filament for your 3D printer. Uh, I've been talking to Greg Summerlin about a lot of his products. He is also coming out with a line of 3D printers that he's going to have on his website. And something interesting for the Garden Railroad guys out there, he sells ro robotic lawnmowers. And what is that? Those are lawnmowers that run off of GPS and they actually mow your yard. I find that to be absolutely a fascinating subject because I could just see them docking themselves and then going out at night and mowing around my garden railroad <laughs> and then going back in the garage to replug themselves in and recharge. It's absolutely fascinating technology. On the filament segment of his website, he wanted me to show the various colors and he told me to click on the PLA uh, thing right here, if I can do that. How do I do that, boys? Keep going down. This is mm -hmm. where I'm going to do an edit, because I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Keep going down. Keep going mm -hmm. down. Maybe a link underneath it. Or not. No, I think it be too far. There you go. Mm -hmm. How about that? And this is showing me the black and all oh. the different colors. Oh, Check this out. Amazing. Wow. And it's absolutely amazing, he tells me, to get all these colors from one 
supplier like he has that a lot of people have just a few colors but he in fact stocks a whole lot of different colors you can check out his website just like we're doing here right now by going to glroboticsusa.com mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, Greg for helping us support the best hobby in the world and when we have James Regeer on and in fact I'm purchasing a 3d printer too we're gonna do a segment with the new resin 3d printers to show how easy they are to work with um, we, we ventilate them because uh, the way James has described it to me, they've got a, just a bit of an odor. They put out a bit of, and you want to ventilate that when you're using mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So dedicated whole system and computer for that. I'm looking forward to it. The What's Neat Studios, in fact, are getting a new computer system for editing so that we can make things faster and a couple of different computers that we can use under the table here so we can bring multiple Skype feeds at the same time. So I know we've had multiple guests on, but mm -hmm. we're envisioning a time where we can have different monitors with an individual on each monitor at the same time. Wow. So we're just Congrats. trying to improve mm -hmm. things here as we percolate along and try to present the hobby in the best light that we can. So with that, what else do we have to talk about, folks? The cactus. I know. Where are those cactus Get at tonight? Behind you. Yep, there they are. The HO scale ones and the G scale ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've talked about those on the show, the prickly pear cactus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we're bringing this up is we want to thank all the folks uh, that had contacted um, our wonderful friend, um, John. John Fowler down there. He sold some cactus this week, and we want to thank very much the viewers of the show. In fact, a lot of people went to Red Board Hobbies. It's amazing to me that when we're just talking about the hobby the way we do, so many people do actually spend money and support our uh sponsors and we've had a lot of folks ask us how can we support you guys how can we help you guys with the show and the best way to really summarize that is to simply support our sponsors that's the best way um, I'm working actually I have contacted John this week myself and we are actually uh, working on a little project that I hope we can get off the ground um, it'll be pretty neat and mm -hmm. if, if we can make it happen I'll share more information and in the future but um, mm -hmm. as good a work as he does uh, this project that we're doing, I don't know that I would trust it to anybody else but him. So um, it, it'll be a pretty big little project if we if we can get it off the ground. But uh, looking at his work there, it just does not look like 3D printing, and he does excellent work. That's awesome. Yeah, the guy's amazing. He's a total overachiever, like we've said before. Absolutely. Um, I just love talking to him. And the last show that he was on, he was absolutely brilliant on. So we're going to throw out a question out there and talk about a little bit of model railroading right now. And I want to start with Glenda. Glenda, if you were to build a layout, and I know you've seen all the different scales here right now, what scale do you think you would build a layout in? I would build a layout in a G scale. I love G. I, I know it takes um, a lot of space, but a G scale, you could see everything. It's just, it's, to me, I, I thought at first, I thought, I used to tell Stephen, that's such a big train, but not after seeing it mm -hmm. and, and more and more, G scale is awesome to me. Um, Indoors or outdoors? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd probably have to have it outdoors because it's so big. But um, I met a lady and a man that had G-Scale, and they used to travel to train shows. And yes. they had nothing but G-Scales. And when we went down in their basement, it just, I, I could not believe it. You could see everything on mm -hmm. the train. Just, it was just, I, it was just awesome. So G scale was for me. Oh, I can't wait for the weather to get um, nice so we can run the one outside. Right. I, I love G scale, although I love I, I love all trains. It's just G scale yeah. has been my favorite. Mm -hmm. yep. So Steve, you gotta start digging in the backyard. I know, I've got it, I got <laughs> nothing to do. I just got the little loop in the basement of, I know. of uh, some G we scale. Love that. But yes. yeah, we gotta get carried away with it. The yes, one thing is, that so. I really appreciate about modeling HO scale inside is it doesn't grow. I don't have to run around and trim the layout every single <laughs> yeah, week like you do with the large yeah. scale. Yes. Because large scale, there is a maintenance mm -hmm. factor that you've gotta quantify Chris. when you decide to build something like that. And right. if I were starting out all, already now today and you I don't think that I would actually build the large scale layout in the backyard. Mm -hmm. There's 400 feet of track, it's 200 feet long all the way across. Yeah. And maintenance wise, when things are growing, you gotta stay on top of it. Right. Well, um, that's part of the hobby. Mm -hmm. Not to mention <laughs> well, not <laughs> the snowfall, yeah. clearing oh. the tracks. But look how cool yeah. it is it when we show yeah. video yes. run bys in the snow. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see those snow plows on the G scale going right These on through the These Bachman K27s so. mm -hmm. plow the snow, and oh, I bet sir. I'm running a clip of that right now. And it's absolutely <laughs> magnificent. Now, some of the clips that I've shot out there have taken hours and hours to set up and shoot because you generally want, you only get one chance to do a plow run by. 
during any one given snowstorm, mm -hmm. and that's usually in one direction. So I'll get two runbys on the Garden Railroad for one snowstorm, one in one way, one the other way. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there's a lot of setup involved in filming it out there. Just going out there and running it, I've had actually Garden Railroad open houses. There was a G-Scale club in St. Louis, and this is going back probably 15 years ago, that they would come by my property every December. And once we had an ice storm out there, and I hope I'm not looking for f footage of this, but I know, I think I can find it. But I had folks in the backyard right after an ice storm, and I managed to get that all to run out there. I was literally out there. I hooked a garden hose up to my hot water heater <laughs> and ran it all the way outside and warmed up all the tracks to defrost everything, got it running perfect, took the leaf blower, cleared out paths in the snow <laughs> on the ground so that they could walk, had a huge roaring bonfire out there, and actually pulled off an open house literally hours after an ice storm. Wow. I do want to say that uh, Joe Fugate had uh, contacted me this evening, and evidently out in where he lives in his state, uh, they had a major ice storm. And so Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine has been delayed about five days he's anticipating it was going to be out on the 15th of this month and now they're thinking it's going to be more like the 20th because he has no internet service and he has no electric and he doesn't think he's going to get it back for about five days mm. um, I mm. asked him if he would send us some photographs and I'm going to check my email and see if I in fact got some pictures but uh, they had some major trees down out there uh, hit his cars um, hit the Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine studios, oh, the buildings man, wow. that they wow. broadcast out of and work out of. Hmm. So um, wish all the best to Joe and all the mm -hmm. folks out west. And we're going to get that this week. This week, uh, coming here. This as week soon as this show coming. comes out, yeah. Yep. We got so the we'll three plus inches. Yeah, so we're going to get two storms in a row, one on yep. Tuesday, Wednesday, and one on Thursday. And we're mm -hmm. looking. For, I'm looking forward to the beauty part of it. Let's make some hot tea and just enjoy watching the snow yes. on the river. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things in the world. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to um, George Bogatuck this week. And George uh, might be on the show with us. And in fact, we're going to set up a time that George can come out here and hang out with us on the bluff. And I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. But he wanted me to talk about the TSU uh, decoders. This is a TSU KN1 decoder, and that is N-scale. And it's designed to fit your N scale wide body locomotives. So it'll fit in your E units, like what we've got on the table here. Imagine that in N scale. It'll fit in your uh, Amtrak uh, F40 PH locomotives. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll also fit in your F3 locomotives. Mm. And this is a full-blown Tsunami 2 type of a decoder for N-Scale, whereas it's got everything in it, including all the big sounds that you would expect, like dynamic digital exhaust. And that's where the locomotive idles up and idles down, depending upon the load that it's pulling. They've really made some advancements in the N-Scale department. In fact, those GP38s that we've got on the N-Scale layout that I'm probably showing you running right now, both of those locomotives have got sound in them as well. And those are narrow uh, bodies. And those have got the sound value decoders uh, that Bachman is so proud of. And those are also made by uh, Soundtracks out there in Durango, Colorado. And Campbell, while I'm bringing up the Soundtracks website, Let's you know, you didn't ask me what scale I would be starting over again if I was doing it. What scale would you be? Yes. I think I would actually go O scale. Wow, okay. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd, it would have to be indoors, of course, but uh, <laughs> uh, I fell in love with a, uh, a, 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 a website and a Facebook page called Industrial Models, mm -hmm. and he does some fabulous modeling in O scale, and yeah. it, it just blew my mind, and I'm like, you know, as older I get, the harder it is to see this stuff. The, oh, that, that's the more thoughts that all, I would yes. get Did to go think, something bigger, and I think right. if I started over again, yep. I would probably go O scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just want you, it's so cool and amazing. You just want to see it all. So absolutely, that's, mm -hmm. yep. absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love the sound that O scale makes, and you know, three rail is such a large hobby, but also two rail O scale looks that's, fabulous. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I'd be doing, two rail O scale. Yep. So you're not going to go three rail. You're going to go two. I'd go two rail. I want to keep it, you know, realistic looking. So. What manufacturers make, I know Overland Models makes two rail O scale models. What other manufacturers? Any of you viewers watching can Atlas. correct me. I think it's, yeah, Atlas, their industrial O line. Mm -hmm. I believe that they make some of the two rail stuff too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely amazing. So I've got the Soundtracks website up, and that is soundtracks.com. And y'all, if you enter the product code WNTW when you make your purchase, WNTW15, you'll get 15% off of your purchase of decoders and speakers and all the wonderful stuff That's that they nice. do sell. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to their website, their website store here, and I want to go to, I'm um, navigating right down to the Tsunami 2 digital decoders, which is right here. 
They've got speakers. They've got so much really cool product. They sell wiring. They sell a lot of stuff on this website. But mm -hmm. the thing that George wanted me to talk about was the Big Boy Sound. And that is, I believe it's the Big Boy 4014 where they actually recorded the real sounds off of 4014. And that's the Big Boy that's presently running. No other manufacturers has recorded sounds off of that. When you buy the Atherin Big Boy locomotive, you're actually getting the authentic sounds off of 4014 and Soundtracks makes that decoder. That's awesome. And I just think it's fantastic that mm -hmm. they can actually have bragging rights like that. Yeah, it's <laughs> yes. amazing. Now I can vouch for it because, of course, I brought the Promontory Summit version from mm -hmm. now. Well, hobby shop I'm working at, Mark Twain Hobby in St. Charles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, the whistle on it, like you just said, the real thing, there's a nice bass sound to it with the mm -hmm. sugar cube speakers. However, our friend uh, JT Burke from Scale Sound Systems, uh, he doesn't have any uh, estimated time on making any speakers as of now because there's kind of a limited supply. But what I was going to say to this is he's able to, I think, get the retrofit kit that he makes that you can pop that right in instead of the stock speakers mm -hmm. in that Athern Big Boy with the Soundtracks decoder factory built. Mm. That's so awesome, I just want to throw man. that out there. It's awesome to have you there. Um, the uh, Big Boy 4014 sounds come in three different formats. First of all, the TSU 2, uh, 2200. And the 21-pin PNEM decoder is for HO scale. And the TSU-1100 is for the N-scale big boy folks out there. So check it out at the Soundtracks website. I also want you to check out the Soundtracks YouTube channel. George Bogatuck has made a lot of videos about decoder installations and all the products that Soundtracks makes and easy to follow videos on that site. So check it out at this, once again, the Soundtracks YouTube channel. Um, George, I wish you were on the show tonight. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but um, things just didn't work out scheduling-wise. But rock and roll, thank you again to Nancy and George and all the wonderful folks in Durango, Colorado for also helping us support the best hobby in the world, the hobby of model railroading, through our show. Yeah. So with that, guys, we're coming up on to, I believe, 29 minutes. Is there anything else that we want to talk about tonight? Just you try did. to stay warm this week. Yeah, it's it's stay, stay warm, everybody. Warm. I know, right? I feel like this was a very short show, but it wasn't. It's a full 30 minutes. Yep. Thank you very much, Steve, for bringing all of this wonderful O-scale uh, three-rail stuff for us to look at. Daniel, thank you for bringing yep. your train thank that you, we could all set up and thank hear the you, sounds on. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting show. A little bit different dynamic mm -hmm. tonight using the Internet to show you things the way they really are. And never mind the learning curve and the time it took, but... You know, we're just simple model railroaders trying that's to produce right. a show mm -hmm. to share with you what's new every single week in our hobby. And that's the best hobby in the world, the, the hobby of model railroading. And I don't know why I feel like I'm repeating myself when I say that, <laughs> but it's, you know, kumbaya. It's great. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks and again. let's go run some trains. Let's All right. Thank you. Trains. When you put the smoke in, just put it in the top there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, these two things are different, so yep. what's the difference here? What's the difference? Yeah, see, this see the difference. Don't these units usually have two engines? Mm -hmm. They're all one big engine. One big right. engine? Yeah. Are all these motorized now, powered? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, they should be. So one way to find out. Well, that's just, just curious. Power one up. All right, here, we'll be able to plug it because sometimes AC power gets all. Take it for a little back and forth spin. Go for it.